Professor Steve Miller. We're conducting some tutorials on GMesh for the purpose of creating computational domains for CFD simulations. In this particular tutorial, we'll examine simple parametric modeling. In a previous one, we looked at creating CAD models and, of course, implementing, importing them into GMesh and then creating um, basic grids. We're going to do the same thing today, but maybe for simpler geometries. Maybe we don't need a CAD package. Perhaps we want to do a simple CFD simulation of a backward-facing step, a simple boundary layer, perhaps a nozzle or a cylinder flow or pipe flow or channel flow. In this case, there's no point in getting a particular CAD program out to create the geometry. We can do it quickly in almost any grid generation program, and of course, GMesh is no different. The first step is to, of course, start GMesh, and you should see a window like this, where you have a user directory, your username, and an untitled file. It's always good to do a new GMesh file when you're starting. So file, new. In this case, call one parametric. And of course, create a subdirectory. Let's click save. And it's asking me, do we want to use a geo extension? We'll use yes, because that's the grid GMesh extension geo. I will use the app open cascade geometry kernel. You can always change that later and actually go back and forth while you're uh, doing operations. And we're ready. So now we have parametric.geo and we're ready to create some modules. Just to make sure you're okay, you have no other simulations loaded. And you can go to tools, statistics, and of course you have nothing there. We need to create some geometry, so which is watertight for a computational domain. I'm not going to create anything particular, I'm just going to create a few objects and show you how we might manipulate them. This all is all under the geometry checkbox in the left hand plane. So remember, this little button here, the little triangle, will open up the mesh options. We don't want to use that right now. We always have to watertight geometry in two or three dimensions to start. So let's open up geometry first. Geometry. Now there's two main areas we need to look at. One is elemental entities, which is the largest areas which you can create geometry for a fluid domain. And the second one is physical groups, where we tell GMesh where the fluid domain is, if our particular CFD solver needs that. Some won't. Let's open up the elemental entities because we want to create an entity. You'll see another options. Under here, you can see we can change the geometry kernel. I would just left click built in or open cascade to change if we so desire. Let's not do that now because we just clicked and chose open cascade. Let's close that and now open up add. Under add, we have many different options. There's basically points. So if you want to create a simple 2D domain, you might create some points and then connect them with lines. We'll do that in another video. You might create splines, which connect those points, beziers and B splines. And then from those, you might also create circles in 2D or circular arcs and ellipses, rectangulars or two-dimensional or disk. Now we're entering three-dimensional shapes after, of course, the plane surface. There's a surface filling, a sphere, a cylinder, a box, a torus, cone, wedge, and volume. So these are your basic shapes. And if you add these and do Boolean operations to say add and subtract, merge them, you can create very complicated volumes. So let's try a few just for fun. So I have our open domain. Let's just rotate our view a little bit. Okay, now we'll try, let's say, box. So I left click box and a menu comes up. And it actually, I can actually move my mouse around and place it manually. And you'll see in the window over here on the left, it's changing the X, Y, and Z coordinates. Now there's two ways to add any entity. One is, and this is very confusing for new GMS users, it's not explained too well in their video tutorials, but I could simply move my mouse around here and then I could look and I could just click E. I could just click E and it would put the box there. And it's snapping to these particular coordinates. It's snapping at 0.1 increments. Remember the dimensions are whatever you make of them in. The dimensions will be interpreted by the CFD solver. Essentially GMesh is dimensionless. For example, if we put out a file for a grid file for a CFD solver, it will have the dimensions which we specify. For simple, simple entities like this, instead of doing it visually and clicking E to, of course, um, you know, insert a box, I like to do it manually. So let's put the corner of the box at x0, y0, and z0. You can see as I'm tabbing and entering the values, the box has moved to that position. Now dx will be the unit distance in the x direction. Let's make it 2. 
the dy position might be, say, 1. Let's leave it 1. And say dz will be, say, 0 0.50. And tab. And now the boxes conform to that. Now you'll see if I move my mouse out of this window, it's gonna, it might try and move it around again, especially if I highlight the window. And see, now I've lost my settings, x, y, and z. So let's go put that at the origin again. And there it is, tab through. And all I have to do now is move my mouse, don't highlight the window again, and click add. Now the box is created. I can then go in and say add a second box if I want. But let's make the second box a little bit different position. Let's make it at say, x1, uh, y.5, and leave everything else the same, except maybe dz will be 2. And we'll click Add. And no, let's make that 0 0.10. Oop, 0 0.10. OK, and we'll click Add. OK, now I click Add again, and now I close the window. I can click the little red X, or I can push Q. I like Q because it's quicker. And now I have a new two parametrics of boxes, which you can see overlap. Now I can double click and actually see the different visibilities. And I'll just leave them like this for now. I can also go to geometry visibility and turn on say surfaces, and I can turn on volumes. Now you see the little yellow, it, and I don't, I don't have any mesh, right? So I could technically turn off all these. Let's do that. I'm double clicking the blue and I'm going to mesh visibility and unchecking these options. And you see, I still see the same things because I'm only working with geometry. I haven't made a mesh yet, and I'm not going to in this video. I'm just trying to create the fluid volume. And right now, it consists of these two blocks. Let's double click again and go back to geometry visibility. And I can see I'm seeing all points, curves, surfaces, and volumes. And I'm seeing all points, curves, surfaces, and volumes. If I move my mouse around, I can highlight different lines points, and these little yellow dots represent the volumes. I can select them by simply left-clicking with an appropriate menu, but I don't have a menu selected, so nothing really happens. I can still click and drag, mouse wheel to zoom in and out, and right-click to pan. It's that simple. All right, let's continue. Let's perhaps add something else just for fun. And you can try all these things. All these things like, say, cylinder, is going to have options like this. And let's just add a cylinder for fun. Let's maybe add it at a center location of 0, 1, 0. Um, and then dx, dy, dz are going to be its um, changes in distances. So let's make that 2. And its radius will be 0.5. Let's make that 1. Yeah, that's too big. OK, 0 0.25. Oh, I like that. And its angle, you can make it like a half cylinder if you want maybe just uh, pi. And you see now it's a half cylinder in the, in the figure. And let's click Add. Now we don't have to have snapping on. We can change these to different values or just ignore snapping altogether. Remember, snapping is for when you're moving your mouse. Now since I've already cl clicked Add, I wouldn't want to go back here and say add a different cylinder. I obviously would add a second half cylinder or something. And so it's saying I should push Q to quit and abort. So let's do that. So aborting doesn't remove that cylinder. So now you see I have three volumes, two are boxes, and one is a cylinder. You can also see I can add other things. Wedges are very popular. You can see I add a wedge in here, and I can change all of its parameters here and move it around the app. But we're just going to work with these three things for now. So I push Q to get out, and I can check my statistics, tool statistics. And you can see geometry, I'll hit update, I have 22 points, 33 curves, 17 surfaces, and 3 volumes. That makes sense. Under mesh, I have nothing because I haven't created any mesh. And I'm actually, I mean, I could create a mesh now from these, but I actually have three different volumes. I should try and combine my volumes. So let's see this from a surface point of view. I would go to geometry visibility, and they're all selected. I can also go to all geometry options, and I can see, of course, all the visibility of these types of options. You can play with these options yourself too. And in fact, in general, you can actually change some of the aspects of the CAD, which is helpful to make watertight meshes. For example, removing small edges and removing small faces. These might be good checkbox to be using when, of course, you're importing CAD models and trying to fix them up with these particular options. Uh, you generally don't need extremely small features in a CAD model, for example, like the face of a screw or something, and you just want to remove that. So these can automatically remove particular options, which is really good for CFD. So let's just close that now. 
and go on and see what we might for say transformations. So let's close out add and open up transform. Now transform are general operations where we can translate. That means we can move one of the volumes, we can rotate one of the volumes, or we could scale one of the volumes. So they all are very simple. All you have to do is left click one of them and an option comes up. And we can see that we would need to say select something, but we'll select the volumes later. So let's leave that right now. But let's try and operate, say, on this particular volume right there. And that would be the one for the square. Let's try and translate it just a tiny, tiny amount. So the translation from its current position will go into a particular direction. And let's just say we do 0 0.05 for fun. OK, so I've tabbed out, and these are the settings. Now I want to go in and select the entities I want to translate. So there's the volume. I push E. Well, volume pop-up picture comes up. Now left click, and now it's selected. Now I can push E to end the selection. I could select more of these. Say I select the other volume, and maybe I didn't want to select it. It turns red when I'm selected. I would push U to undo it. Oop, it's done. And maybe I want to undo that one too. Well, I don't have any selected. Nothing will happen. How about we just select this one once more? So you can see how we can select multiple volumes to move. Now it says push E to end selection. I'm going to push E. And you can see if you were watching the screen, it moved. Let's now translate it in the opposite direction. OK, now I go back to my main screen and I would select my volume, left click it. And now to end the selection and execute the command, I would push E and watch the figure and box go back. That's easy. So now it's done. And you can see there's no like confirmation dialog. It's very um, uh, stiff in terms of its user interaction. OK, let's look at one more example. You can also scale geometry or rotate it or you can apply symmetry. Let's try the rotation for fun. And let's say I did not particularly like my angle of my cylinder. Well, here's the basic points of rotation and everything. I could easily um, copy the rotated figure and leave the original where it is if I select that option, or I could select the angle of rotation, the points about where it's rotated, and of course, the axis angles of where it's rotated. So we're not going to do a rotation right now. Let's just close that up. But let's say maybe we want to do a scale. So that might make a particular um, geometry bigger or smaller. So let's try and scale uh, you know, this, this upper right um, rectangle. So I can still move my cursor around and other things. Let's move here. Ooh, I like that angle a lot. Uh, right there. OK. Let's scale it. It's saying 0.5, so that's good. Let's do 0 0.75 and the x direction, scale in y, maybe 1, so it won't change it in y at all, and say z1. So it's just going to scale this um, about the x axis by a factor of 0 0.75, and the other axis should stay the same. So I have my settings done. Now I left click to select. I can get my volume selected. Oh, there's the volume. Selected the volume and I simply push E to execute. Oh, and there it goes. It just got smaller in the X direction, and the Y and Z direction stay the same. I've executed the command, and it's scaled. Now I can hit quit, and I'm done. OK, and I'm going to hit Command S or Control S to save it, and it's asking me if I want to overwrite the particular mesh file. I'll hit Replace. So now in my run directory, I have a .geo file and I have a .mesh file. The .mesh file is actually describing these figures, and the .geo file is a script file. We'll look at those at the end of this uh, examination. So the transformations are simple, and we can also apply and transform points or surfaces or lines. Right now I'm just showing you how to do it for volumes, but when I select, I simply left click on any of those other figures and I can do the translation. It works exactly the same. To keep the video concise, we'll move on. Now we might also say we want to extrude something. Extrusions are basically, say, taking an existing surface and we will translate it. And by translating it, we might create a new volume usually done on surfaces. So if I had a 2D domain or 2D surface in here, I could click and ex extrude it or rotate it to say create some axisymmetric computational domain. Perhaps in another video I'll show you how to do this. Next, let's close up extrude and do boolean. This is where it gets fun. 
I can do Boolean in operations. If I have any particular volumes or surfaces, if they overlap, I could create an intersection. And the, if I say do an intersection of two domains, it will take where they intersect and make a new volume. A union will take two volumes and fuse them. A difference will, of course, make a hole in the domain. Let's try one of these now, just as an example, but they all work exactly the same. Remember, intersection will give you a volume from two volumes of where they intersect and overlap. A union will combine two volumes, and a difference will, of course, take one and subtract the other. Let's try the difference right now. So I left-click difference. And it'll ask me to say select the object. Well, I want to make sure I'm selecting volumes. So let's go and select the first one. This is the first object. So I left click volume one and I push E to select it. And now I'll select the second volume, which will be the subtractor. And I'll zoom in and I'll click this volume three, which is the half cylinder. I'll left click it and push E. Now it's done. It executed the command. So I can quit by pushing Q this window. And let's look at what we have. I now clearly have two volumes. A new volume, which is called volume one, which is the original volume. And I still have volume two, which is unmodified. But you'll see volume three, which was the half cylinder, disappeared. Why is that? Because we used it as a tool to subtract from volume one. Now let's rotate around and look what happened to volume one. It's gone. That's wonderful. OK, let's do another operation. I've shown you the difference operation. Now, a union operation would combine volume 1 and 2, and an intersection would only give me the part which encompasses the, where volume 1 and 2 overlap. For fun, let's just do a union operation. So left click union, as so I want to combine volume 1 and 2, and I click one volume, left click, and I push E. And now I select the second volume, and I push E. And now you can see I only have one volume. It's taken volume one and two and combined them. This is just like many other types of CAD software and should be obvious to most people familiar with the CAD. But if you're just getting the CFD and have no CAD experience, this might be rather confusing. So you see now, and I'm going to save this, I like to save a lot, and then I go into my subdirectory and make a copy and backup. I only have one volume. Let's look at the statistics of this particular case. Statistics, tool statistics. You'll see, and I update, I'm using 100 megabytes of RAM, and I have 20 points, 30 curves, 12 surfaces, and only one volume. So you can see, you can create very complicated computational domains for CFD using the simple CAD geometry and approach. Now for many simple CFD solvers, or complicated CFD solvers even, that are being benchmarked for simple flows, this is an excellent way to create geometry.